So the 60-day capital gains tax RTI, that stands for Real Time Information Report, is relevant to two sorts of people. Uh, firstly, UK residents who are selling a UK property on which there will be capital gains tax to pay. So it doesn't affect those people selling their own home, say, or, and it doesn't affect those people selling a, an investment property at a loss, say. It only affects those making a gain in excess of their capital gains tax annual allowance, which is, by the way, £3,000 in 24 straight 25. So it's, it's, it's a lot lower than it used to be. Um, and the other sort of people it affects is people who are non-UK residents living overseas who are selling a UK property. And for those people, they have to do this return even if there is no capital gains tax. Okay, I've never done any of those yet, but um, I've done quite a few UK um, residents who are selling a buy to let, they've decided to get out of the market and they're making a, a capital gains tax, uh, well, they're making a capital gain and they need to do this report and it's 60 days from the date of completion. You have to get the return in and also make a capital gains tax payment. Um, so you have to move quite quick because it is a long-winded process. If you haven't already got a government gateway account as a seller, you have to register with HMRC for a government gateway account. After you've done that, you have to register for a capital gains tax on UK property account and you get a, a specific reference number for that. And then generally that's what you then you'd contact your accountant, give him this um, reference number. The accountant puts these figures in uh, to HMRC online and they, they come back with a code that they send to you, you give that to your accountant, and that, makes your, that means your accountant can then submit the return on your behalf. Um, so it's quite a long-winded process up to then. Then the accountant does the return online he, and he sends it to you. You can print it off, send it to the seller for approval. If, if the seller's okay, the accountant submits it with his calculations and, tells the, and, and with a payment reference and tells the, um, the, the seller or his client or her client what they have to pay and, and, and when to pay it. So it's quite a long-winded process. And, that, that, and part of the process, though, is you have to calculate the capital gains tax. And you think, well, that's quite straightforward. Well, it's not, because if you're in the middle of a tax year, and you will be somewhere in the middle of a tax year, then, then you have to estimate what the taxable income of the seller is, because capital gains tax is added on top of the, your income when working out whether you are paying it at 10% up to the higher rate tax threshold or, or at 20%. So you have to estimate this capital gains tax based on taxable income. When you then do a tax return, which could be quite a bit later, you put the figures in again, by that time you'll have the real income tax figures available for income tax, and you can see whether you've under or overpaid the capital gains tax. If you've overpaid, you might get a refund. If you've underpaid, you've got a bit more to pay. So it's a really long-winded, it's quite a long-winded thing and it, and it drags on quite a long time and a lot of people don't realise that they have to get moving on this quite quickly.